idiots. Right, well there we are. You didn't expect to see me here, did you? But we're on Brixham Breakwater Pier. I expect I'm gonna lose loads of tackle, but we're gonna give it a go. Uh, some feather fishermen down there. They've already asked for my scissors to cut the line because they're snagged up already. But hopefully they're packing up and going. Uh, got what I lend my scissors really, but I offered them to him, but I wanted them back. But got the wife with me. She's going for a cup of coffee in a minute. She's not stopping there, but she's going to come back and probably bring a chair. So we're fishing there. I've got my Ziplex, the TF5050, and I've got a new reel on it. I've got a Penn Spin Fisher Live Liner, six and a half thousand. Give that a whirl. Um, they've been reduced, and I thought, why not? So let's get a glove out. So yeah, here we have it, Brixham. That's in the harbour. There's the wife. We've got an outdoor swimming pool over there, but I think it's shut. I was gonna go fish over on them rocks, but water's in and you can't get to them. Well, you could get to them, I suppose. I'm gonna go have a look anyhow. And we're here. casted that out far enough hopefully to miss the rocks but bloody worm come off didn't it so I've got one worm out there so I'll leave it out for a bit what my worm now that's a bird what now nah. flew out when I casted one of them was threaded on and I didn't push it right on I thought I'd leave a dangly bit on it but they ain't the right hooks I'll change the hooks for bait older hooks so yeah, we've got fresh lug today. Uh, no, we haven't, we've got fresh rag from paint and bait and tackle or whatever it's called, hardware. But, uh, what is it? Paint and tackle and bait. Lovely bloke in there, had a good old chat with him. So yeah, I've got a two up flapper out there with one up on it that's baited, the other one in. I've cast out far enough, should be away from the rock. So when I bring it up, I shouldn't get snagged. We've got loads of mackerel fishermen down there. Well, not loads, we've got four, but they're getting in a right kerfuffle. He don't know how to fish, he came up to me. They've obviously bought some rods, they're on Aldi. And uh, good luck to him, you never know, it might give him the bug, might it, to actually fish properly. I, I was going to lend him the scissors, but he ain't come back, is he? Can't just lend your stuff out willy-nilly, can you? Right, let's tighten this up. I don't know how I'm going to film this, to be honest. So yeah, bricks and breakwater. I don't know if they call it a pair, all I keep seeing is bricks and breakwater. So that's it really. I've got two rods with me. I might fish one, might fish two. I've got the other one, it's a different rod. You've never seen it before. I thought what an ideal opportunity to use it. But it all depends if it's weedy because it's one of them continental rods and it is continental and it's got small eyes on it. And uh, yeah. But yeah, it's fantastic. Now you know me. I have got some opinions of Devon already. <laughs> but it's a lovely place to be, I'll tell you. I'll talk more about that in a bit. So, uh, yeah. Watch the old rod if you want. Put 
put them in the van or whatever. So I've got them to the bucket. Cameras on. Uh, a bait needle, I'll sort that out. If I fold them like that, it's be better, wouldn't it? They shouldn't come here without any scissors down, should they? Up where? Yeah. New though, isn't it? In old, is it? I wonder who's got the money to buy that to them flat land. Get off my land! It's not good getting old. Just nearly got a crop in my neck. Get off my land! The fishing boat has come back in. Doesn't what one? We was probably up when we were still when we got. They should have fished down there where they were, shouldn't they? Because this is ideal for not getting snagged. Famous last words. Famous last words that I'm sure I will get snagged. But it's lovely, look. We've got all the masts moving in the air, look. Now then, if you've not tuned into Van Seas Fishing before, then uh, don't forget to click that subscribe button and uh, ring the bell and drop me a comment and uh, this is a channel not where it's edited to show fish after fish or edited to show this that and the other i tend to have a good old rattle on and rattling on is what i'm good at not so good at fishing but if you're watching this you'll know that i've caught a six pound six ounce cod cod and uh yeah you can't knock that can you it was just before another chap caught three cod out of the out of the place up to six pounds so i'm quite chuffed that i possibly was the first to get a big cod out of that river that was published definitely on youtube but yeah six pounds six ounce and that's been uh it died i couldn't do nothing about it gutted and uh, and i was gutted but it's i've got lovely four lovely fillets out of that for four meals so chuffed to bits with that these things happen in fishing but i've had it you watching this now you'll see it but yeah if you want to subscribe to this i'll warn you now i rattle on i am not one of these that just cuts to this that and the other it is my fishing trip warts and all the wife has just gone i think she said see you later but she's gone so <laughs> can't get away quick enough uh there's rain spots on my seat I hope it's not going to rain. Got swans flying over the breakwater. But hey, what a lovely sight that is. Blue water as well. I'm not used to this. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe. It is like pulling hen's teeth for my channel. It does get sometimes a little bit wearing, let's say. But it is what it is, you know, if I did a 20 minute video or a 25 minute video and uh, it was edited just to show fish and me not talking a lot, then probably more people would subscribe. But that's their loss, isn't it? That's their loss. If that's all they want to watch and do, that's their loss. One trip over. I've got, I ain't got no insurance. <laughs> so yeah, that's their loss, isn't it? You know? You just don't know what you're bloody missing. That's what I say. Normal bloke there, I reckon. In this world of bloody... Do you know I went through two villages yesterday up there in 20 mile an hour already. Just been talking to some South African lady in the car park. And she says to me, in Bristol, it's 20 mile an hour all over. Plus you've got surcharges and everything to drive through the town. That ain't a city, is it? Bristol? I have to look at the population and probably is a modern city isn't it but yeah what an absolute what's this country coming to what is it coming god this moon's coming on early isn't it
Yeah, it's not good. So, three things I've found in Devon, and I'll, I'll, I'll put the moon in first, shall I? Is flipping 20 mile an hour, um, and you can't even do, you, I mean, the maximum you can do is 25, but at least at 25 mile an hour, you can get into third gear. Still pottering. I ain't on about zooming along in a van. Um, car parking bays for car parks. They are so tiny, I have to park right over and then climb through the van and get out the wife's side. Yesterday, I was parked next to a Tesla. And every time I parked, got in and out of the seat, out of the, out of the van, the bloody security system come on the Tesla. I, I, I was absolutely, can't hit this bloody car door, which I didn't. I don't anyhow, but I mean, what a thing to bloody park next to down there. Car parking. You can get four hours there for five pound odd, and then the next car parking charge is 28 pound for all day. So you just have to keep going back to the car parking pane. But it's all new things, isn't it? I've never known anywhere where you have to pay for parking all the time, so it's something different for me. Don't think I'm mooning, because I'm not. I expected to pay. But it's all different experience, isn't it? But the car parking bays are tiny. And if you park outside the bay here, they nab you. Now that's probably a good thing, they should do that all over. Right, I am fishing Ziplex TF5050. We've got 24 pound main line. And we've got my new acquisition. I'm chuffed to use it. You just knock that live liner, what they call a live liner, which is the bait, bait runner, one click, and it's really easy to pull off. And it's got four click settings, preset settings. You can alter them, but I'm not going to alter them. They seem perfectly right for me. I've got that to fish with my sniper rod. Sniper rod is in the van. Well, it's not in the van, it's at me, chalet, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, yeah, I'm chuffed to be using that, but I only brought one fixed bill. So if I get the other rod out, which you will see if I get it out, because you won't miss it, if I do use that, I'm going to have to put a multiplier on it. But, yeah, absolutely fantastic air. Yeah. We've got orange boats. We've got blue boats. White boats. RNLI boot. Wife has gone. I expect if I was to look really intensely, I'd see her. She's probably already gone up the sloop. Anyhow, I'm going now. You uh, can see this. Let's hope I catch. I ain't bothered about what I catch. I am bait fishing. I'm not spinning. Um, I've got a spinning rod in the van. I've got some spinning lures. I could do. I just want a bait fish though. I've never fished it before. Um, and this is the first, first fishing session of our holiday down here. Talk more about that in a bit. See you later. Right. So if you just click this subscribe button and you thought, oh, that sea seems right, I'll give him a chance. Well, I'll tell you something now, shall I? I've just had to reset this flipping GoPro again. Now, I set the clock on this GoPro manually every time I use it because it just doesn't remember its bloody time and date. It does get a bit infuriating at times, but I've done it so many times now, it's getting second nature. But when I've reset it and then I have to reset it again, it just bubbles at me a little bit. But yeah, so why am I down here in Devon? Well, my mate Jimmy, who comments on all my videos and uh, has purchased me a while ago now, a Kenzaki rod. I then bought a second because they were so good. Um, and Alan Crawshaw's just got a Kenzaki and he's been looking forward to getting one for so long, even though I kept saying, get a Saltus to try that out. But he's got a Kenzaki and he's over the moon. Also, Jimmy has... Uh, got me a, my sniper rod which is a Kenzaki boot rod which he uh, asked around at different tackle shops to find out what the best third rod was and they said use that one and to be honest it's absolutely cracking I've caught 
quite a few fish on it. It has let me down at times, but I do catch on it. It's absolutely brilliant. I'm just watching this rod. But getting back to the gist of the story, is Jimmy contacted me earlier in the year and said that he's got a, uh, it's like a chalet come caravan. It's two bed, front room, central heating, shower, brilliant. Comfy sofas, the first night me and the wife fell asleep because it's a five and a half, five hour drive down there and we set off at early hours and uh, set off at early hours and um, we were knackered. So first night we slept on the sofa. So uh, yeah, comfy as anything. And what I'm getting at is Jimmy said you can use, use our chalet. Um, and I could only thank him and thank him and thank him. It's uh, fantastic. Jimmy, you, you, you're one of the best, mate. One of the best. Um, you've helped me out um, with my fishing and uh, you've enabled us to have a second holdy this year, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and I appreciate that and want to thank you. I was going to say at the bottom of my heart, but that's not me, is it? It's not me. But I just want to really thank you. It's a, it's a fantastic gesture, Jimmy and uh, I appreciate it so much and so does Karen. Um, I'm gonna do some fishing in this holiday, but it's not gonna be all fishing because in the Lake District, I did five sessions on the trot and I, it took us a week, took me a week to get over it. I was absolutely shat. So we're gonna get at least two or three sessions done and uh, I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm, it's what it's about, isn't it? We're in a new place. Like I say, the car parking is horrendous because the bays aren't big enough. If they just knocked out a couple of bays and made it small, bigger, it'd be better. Oh, keep thinking that tip's going. Could be the five ounce weight. But yeah, we were uh, at Slapton Sands. That might be one of the marks. So thank you very much, Jimmy. It's much appreciated. Um, absolutely fantastic. I've already thanked you, I've already told you it's fantastic, but thank you very much. But um, yeah, we were at Slapton Sands yesterday. Um, that looks like a good place to fish. But you're in the middle of nowhere, and there they are. They've blocked all the sea front of it off and just put two car parks there. That's ridiculous, I think. They don't have to be as stingy as that, do they? Councils. It's anti-social, in my opinion. Um, we went to B Sands as well. You don't have to pay for parking there, but they've reduced the parking down to just two small car parks. Um, great beach, very busy yesterday. Um, bit horrendous driving. It's like being in the Lake District, but worse. But yeah, so that's another opportunity, but I don't think so. I think I'll fish Slapton because it's easier to get to, literally off the main road and you're in the car park. And there's Budley, um, old muddy puddle. Go check his channel out. His name's Paul. I always thought it was Muddy. But yeah, he's down there. He fishes Budley. And uh, he caught in his last video. So yeah, check Muddy Puddle out. But I might go fish Budley, which is north of Paynton. So uh, yeah, that's my news up to now. And that's why I'm in Devon. Otherwise, I'd be waiting for them fleas to die in that house that I've got to do next for the landlord I work for. And uh, yeah, at least I'm here, not really thinking about them. Should be dead now, I've been sprayed three times. Got to limit my water here because it's pretty hard having a wee. You don't want to know that though, do you? Why did I say that? Yeah, I might take a crap over the wall as well, but I ain't going to do that either, am I? Now, if I need to go, I'll just wife will stop here and I'll go back to the van. All right, no, nah, not yet, mate. Oh, yeah, let's get you on these rods. So we've got over here with the rods, we've got the bay, harbour. Can't see the wife. And over here, Let's see if we can spot any whales. Might be a whale out there, mightn't there? I could have a small fish on there because it's tapped a couple of times. And isn't it great news about ziplets? 
being bought out by Sentry. All the equipment that used to make the Sentry rod, uh, Ziplex rods have been bought. All the specifications have been got off Barbara. Whole thing. And uh, they're making them all ready. They're making the rods all ready. They've got three versions out. You can buy them from Veals and Jerry's and I'm assuming plenty of other fish and tackle shops. And you think you can buy a rod complete or you can buy it as a blank. But it's great, isn't it? We've got a, a fantastic British English rod builder back. Because it was a huge loss, really, in the fishing community, in my opinion. And the more British rods there are built in this country, the better. See you in a bit. Right, we're going to reel this in and see what's on it. Um, one worm came off in the cast. I've baited up another flapper rig. We're going to send another flapper rig out. It's got bait holder hooks on this one. Um, and we'll see what happens. So uh, next time you, uh, well, you'll see me now. Let's get it reeled in. Well, the worms are gone. So we'll get this cast of that again. I was told it's very rough ground there, which I'm sure it is, but I'm casting out far enough to get it up in the water. So uh, let's hope these worms stay on. Make sure I ain't gonna fall in. Well, I don't know about this, but that live liner reel is absolutely fantastic. It is superb, and I might have to buy another one um, because it's just totally different. One click off on the live liner at the back, and you can pull the line off. You ain't got to set your drag, you just knock that, and it's working. I reckon a cast off the ground with that, we'll probably try it today. We'll probably send it out a long, long way, even with that reel. Because it isn't a long cast spill. I still think, if you can bend that rod, you'll send that, with that reel on, a long way. Play far enough to catch fish. As soon as I click that, the bait runner comes off, what they call a live line. And your drag's, your drag's full on. One click, here. That's the clicker, and there's three, two, three, four positions, and that's a really tight drag, whereas that's off, that's on, one. See that? Really comes loose, and then as soon as you turn the handle, this clicks off. So it's all good. So I may actually purchase another reel. But we can't tell the wife that, can we? Because she'll go bananas. Now they're reduced. That's the reason why I bought that. And I bought it, even though I bought the long cast reel for my sniper rod. Um, as soon as I saw that, I thought that would be fantastic for summertime. And uh, hopefully, you never know. But 
again there's something else different isn't it if i bought another one i could choose to use those reels on um my reel my rods for the river couldn't i when does buying fishing gear ever stop i don't think it ever does i don't think it ever does but it will do one day because one day i'll be dead and then there'll just be these videos left of me for people to see and my children hopefully they might hate me by then you never know do you there's uh down here you've got rocks down at the bottom and they go all the way along for sea defense so as long as you cast out far enough and you get the bait up in the water and reel like you need to reel to keep the weight up in the water you shouldn't ever get snagged there until the water drops so i'm quite confident really i'm going to enjoy fishing there i've got a ticket until quarter past three um four hours cost five pound 20 or 580 and i said to the wife sod it we'll just get another two or three hours if we need to um but yeah i want to catch here it would be nice to catch here i've caught in the last two videos you know the six pound six ounce cod and numerous whiting and flounder and whiting so why would i have a cyclist in lycra looking at me do i look like the sort of chap that likes lycra what's going on with that oh christ there's a few more subscribers gone oh bloody la <laughs> anyhow no fish yet and there's nothing heavy nothing at all that's heavy that has been reeled in pulled in or even bitten my rod so i'll see you in a bit well you might not believe this but i've just had a nice conversation with a cyclist yep he was all in his lycra in his bike he'd come past there i said just 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 wait a minute mate because i can't give you five foot of space and he just laughed so i knew i was on to a winner i knew he was all right and he was a nice chap asked my channel asked me what i did um i never told him but i did tell him once he'd asked me but uh yeah forgot to ask your name though mate but it was nice meeting you and uh, he stopped in the same place as me in Paynton. So uh, it's obviously had a cycle ride from Paynton to Brixham. Just goes to show, doesn't it? It just goes to show that there's always a small minority in people and in hobbies and whatever else, if you know what I'm saying, that spoil it and give people a bad name. I mean, I'm probably one of those for fishing. I've never met a receptionist on a doctor's surgery, though, yet, that's been nice. Well, no, I have. I've met one, and she was a young girl, and she'd only worked there two weeks, so they, she had been poisoned, had she? Anyhow, we'll keep going and keep watching. See you in a bit. Right, let's get this reeled in, checked out.
the top, the foilie. What, big foilie or little? I was going to fall over then, casted that out and my hip went and I thought I was going on the floor. Oh, it's a bit of crab shell now. And I thought I was going to go on the floor um, and due to that, the cast went to the left and not straight out. But let's hope it don't matter because at the minute, while it's been going straight out, I haven't got snagged. So should be all right. Top fisherman like me, I've got a dicky bird down here. Looks like a got a bill like a uh, penguin, but it's not a penguin before anyone says out. Oh, she's coughing for that. She bloody always cough. 
car. I'm chuffed for that car. So I might actually put another rod out. You can actually offer ground here really well because you've got all this down the bottom here. You can lay your weight out and hit it. So, uh, yeah, chuffed. Talking to that chap there, he said tuna come off that head over there, explode out of the water. Um, catch on here, bass, um, garfish, mackerel, whiten, um, scorpion fish. That's why I sent out the little tiny size six hooks. I've never had one of them, but I probably need to drop it down. But we'll just have to see, won't we? I just want to catch a fish. Um, I've now set out a pulley panel. Um, size one or one o hooks, only small. Let's see what we get on that. I don't think I'll be catching any flounder here. There's grey mullet in there. He says if you come and bait it up and then come back, you can catch them. And he's told me what to use. So I'm going to use that little trick for when I go up to the lakes again as well. So I've got two new baits. I'm not going to use any bread whatsoever. I'm using the secret baits. So yeah, I haven't had anything heavy yet. Nothing at all. I just reel in and the bait's gone. But I'm going to bait up these uh, this flapper rig again. I might get this other rod together and I may use it with my multiplier and give it a go. So I haven't ever used the rod. I've only ever used the rod once. I've never used it on camera. I had two of the same rod. And I went fishing with a wife to Salt House in Norfolk. And uh, I casted a five ounce weight out and uh, the rod broke in half. And uh, that was the turning point for me because I went from continental rods to uh, leader icon, elite power, the Mark II version, and never looked back really. It's always been, um, for the last few years, it's always been two piece rods. I'll use the odd three piece at the river because it's functionally perfect for the river fishing. They're longer, so you don't have to walk over them stones so much. You still have to, but it's just better for me. Anyhow, that's enough waffle. Uh, I don't know why I said waffle. I think it's because I watch Brett's Fishing Diaries. So, uh, yeah, can't be saying that, can I? Because I rattle on. He might waffle, yeah? I rattle, and that's the difference. Well, I'll put you there because the sun's up there, you see. What I'd like to know is how many times, it's half past one, gone half one now, so it's probably high walk two. It was half one at Torquay. I couldn't find one for Brixham um, on the site I use, so I just use that. So it's about half one, probably 10 to two high water. But I've caught nothing yet, not even had a nod bait keeps disappearing but how many times would you have to come on this breakwater to uh, fish to catch to make a video to get the fish in it because at the minute it, I would have to do another one to try and skank it all together with the same coat and top on and rods and what a load of shite that would be so at this moment in time it's not like a blank isn't it because uh, I'm a one hit pony I come here fish it and if it's a blank, it's a blank. I thought this pair fished its head off. I thought you just came here, chucked it over, and you got a bream, or a whiten, or garfish. I've had size six hooks on. I've now got size two on. I think I've got some size fours, which are bait older hooks. I might use them yet. But what do you do? You can only come here and fish the day, can't you? I wish I could just go to many places and turn up and catch on the first cast. That'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? But I don't think that's realistic. Not for people like me, anyhow. I could have casted my rods out, couldn't I? Left them out there for three hours and uh, caught a fish 
and and claim that I've caught that on the first cast as well, couldn't I? But didn't do that either, did I? Because I reeled in, my bait was gone. You have to reel it in, check it for weed, and you have to reel in every quarter an hour, 20 minutes. If you know the bait in coming back is coming back and it's on there, you can leave it out longer. I mean, I've sometimes left it out for an hour. Just depends how tired I am and whether I can keep get off getting off my box. There you go. Anyway, I'm watching these rods like a hawk at the minute. The chap that come down there and asked for my scissors because he was a mackerel flap, 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 fluffer. And uh, he wanted to cut his line. I said, just pull for a break, mate. Just pull it and break it. You don't want to cut your line and leave all that line. Uh, he then moved and went right down the end of the pair. And I don't think he had any luck. It just bought a gabbard. It just bought the rod and reel and was just having a go, which is what it's all about, isn't it? If it gets you into fishing, then that's a good thing, isn't it? Seems weird using a rod that's orange. Orange is my favourite colour. Um, but I think this rod is spoilt by the fact that it's got black bits in between where it's grippy, you know. But I really liked these rods when I first bought them because I love orange. And a lot of people buy rods because they like the look of them, not, not because they're good. I mean, that rod would be a good rod for the estuary, you know, for catching flounder and stuff like that. The bite detection on that tip of that rod is uh, unbelievable. If a fish actually bites on that rod. Anyhow, that was a bit of rattling on, wasn't it? I'm going to rattle off now, so uh, see you later. I was going to send that out again, but I'm going to stick the flapper rig on. What's that got? Has that got that? I need to check this with my glasses on, don't I? Yeah, thanks. Just going to do a... Uh... <coughs> red dump on this always check behind you for people
Well, that's that out. Oh, the crab bait is still all right. There's nothing wrong with it. I might just freshen that up with something. Um, both rods are out again. We've got flapper rigs on both. I'll have to reel in the orange viper rod because I expect the bait will be gone. But we'll see. We'll see. We will see. Someone's down there crabbing. Could probably crab round here, you know, and make a lip. Well, not make some pocket money, put it that way. Pound a crab, though. If you had some pots, you could chuck them down, couldn't you? Mind you, you need to get peelers, don't you? You need to search for them, really, don't you? I've had to put a bungee cord on my seat cushion because it just blew off. Luckily, it only blew down on the second layer level. So uh, I got it back, so it's all all right. But yeah, get, look at that. I think that's a ghillie mop. I need one of them going into my line like a hole in the head, don't I? But yeah, look at Brixham. Absolutely fantastic. Skies are looking great. A bit grey and angry, but it's like that all day. I was reading a book. Gilly mots are flying all around me, I'm doing my head in. And no snags. I think fishing at the river has taught me how to fish here, so it's quite good. So. Quite good. So I'm going to decide what to do with that crab and squid bait. It still stinks and it hasn't been touched and it's still hooked up perfect. I could put a ragworm on it, I suppose, and bait elastic that on, send that out. Um, just build a bait up. So I think that's what I'll do. I'll get a small ragworm, put a bit of feather, a bit of elastic around it. I'll see you in a bit. Well, it seemed weird reeling that in. It's a bit windy now, hope you can hear. I'm sure you can. But it's uh, very weird reeling uh, molly plier in on a continental rod. Feels totally crap, really, but anyhow, I'm gonna uh, bait that up again, and chuck it out, and then after that, I think I'm gonna retire that rod and go back to the one. Um, you'd really think when you're fishing this mecca that is Brixham. Well, I think it's a mecca. I hear people saying that, but um, you'd think you'd catch, wouldn't you? I've just put a post up on Facebook and people saying get to Chesil, but I can't walk it. Unless I can find a car park to do it, but I'm here in Devon, so I'm fishing Devon. And uh, I think it's about a 75 mile drive to Chesil from here. But it's probably 85 from here. So I don't think that's going to happen. And like I've said before, Chesil doesn't hold any allure to me. If I'm in the vicinity, which I guess I am, then uh, I would possibly fish Chesil, but I'm not. So uh, I'm fishing Devon.
Oh, we're on the back of it. I'm bait fishing this a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Might get one, but you never know. Flat the rig, probably about 40, 50 yards, probably 45. Um, ragworm on it again. I keep using this ragworm. I never seem to catch on it, never. But they are good rag, ragworm. They are quite large as well. So I keep looking for the little ones. Um, whatever I've got left, I should buy another quarter of a pound and take it to the next beach and fish there with it as well. Um, but people say, don't they, fresh bait is best. Not always, especially if it's bloody ragworm. Well, yeah, will I? <coughs> but yeah, wife is coughing. She's just had the cough, hasn't she? Still coughing now. I have just caught on that last cast, on that last reeling. It was a winkle, I think. Now, if you're a, if you're after a winkle, probably a good place to come here is Brixham because it was on my hook. It was, it had eaten my worm and it pet. Did I, did I like to catch a winkle? Yeah, but I don't think that counts. I think it was a winkle. It was like that sort of thing, but it was a mollusk. It was a snail of some description. Um, whether a snail's a mollusk, I don't know. It's irrelevant, really. But there's plenty of fish down there. Uh, there must be plenty of fish down there, let's say, because there's plenty of birds diving under for them. But for me, nothing as of yet. I'm going to chuck this um, pulley rig out again. That's probably the last cast with the orange rod. It's chilled up a bit. It's got cold. It's uh, wind has picked up. But it's still nice. You know, I can't knock it. It is still nice here. And uh, what better can you, uh, what better place can you be to do some fishing, I suppose. It's, um, it's enjoyable, just not catching. But you've had two videos of me catching, haven't you? And I expect there'll be many people that try and say where I fish, but I just ignore them because they're twats. So there you go. Keeps making the line go slack down, doesn't it? Look at that. That's a, that's a wave bite, that is, you know. You know what a wave bite is, though. Yeah, that's where it hits it, yeah. I don't know why I come up with wave bite. I really don't know. It's like... It's... And what I have noticed here is, is that your weight will hit the seabed and you'll tighten up on it and then it goes slack again. It doesn't move much though, but your line does go slack. Uh, I can feel some rain now. Seagulls just let your crisp. But yeah, so we're here, aren't we? We're trying out. It's all you can do, really, isn't it? I don't know if it's... The waves are hitting the breakwater now and it's splashing up a little bit. Yeah, it wouldn't take long. It wouldn't take much of a sea to be crashing over here all the time. Little knock on the orange rod then. These continental rods. I'll put the on it. I don't know if you'll see it though. But in this portion of the rod there, you'll see it bouncing up and down. And the two-piece rod is stationary. 
And that's one thing I don't miss from fishing rods is that bouncing. <coughs> and mackerel off the end of the pair on feathers but me Mr Bait Fisher off the floor ain't got nothing yet if I blank air today that'll keep Keith Cod happy won't it because then Keith will be able to say how much of a better fisherman and catcher he is than me and that I'm fishing in the wrong place can't you Keith if your missus is there, just give him a right on the side of his face and give him a black eye, will you? <laughs> or that. Now, I don't condone hitting or slapping. But if you're sat in the same room as Keith God, give him one round the back of the head. Right, well, I'm going to reel this uh, Viper rod in now. Um, it's getting a lot more choppier. The tide is going out, bouncing all over the place. You forget what um, continental rods are like. And I think the inside tip of the eye is probably about six mil. I'm not used to tip eyes like that. I'm going to walk down there and try and pull it out of this snag and get wet with these waves as well. But I'm snagged up and that's because I'm using a multiplier and not a fixed fill. So I'll bring you back in a minute when I've got this out. Well, I've got that back, as you can see. That's my leader to my weight and rig. I walked down to the left, kept it under pressure, just pulled out. So uh, yeah, that was a cast of 40, about 40 yards, didn't go far at all. Wind's picked up into your face now. And with a multiplier, it don't reel in as quick as a fixed spill. So it didn't get up enough, it got caught in the rocks, but I managed to pull it out by walking down over there. So I'll need to check the line on that reel tonight because I might cast out tomorrow on the beach or the next day and it might just snap off, mightn't it? Because it's got a chafe on it. So 
I'll sort that out tonight and check it out. I've got to bring the reels in and wash them. So I'm going to put that rod away now. I'm not here to keep fishing until I catch. It is what it is. And um, it's getting a lot more choppy now. I've just had a wave come over here. And uh, as you can see, my seat pad on my box is wet. So I can't sit down now. So I'm going to put this uh, Viper rod away from Tronics Pro. Um, it's an old rod, only been used three or four times. I'm going to put that away and I'm going to bring in my Ziplex and chuck that out with a new bait on. And uh, that'll probably be the last cast. This is only going to be a short video. Uh, might be good really, you never know. I might actually pick some subscribers up if I was to put a 20 minute video out. It ain't going to be 20 minutes, I've done an hour's footage up to now. So, Tom will be pleased, short video. And uh, I'm not stopping there to get wet and to blank on this pair that turns up lots of different species. Unless I turn up, but there. Uh, I'll get this put away and then uh, you'll see me bring the other rod in cast it out for its last set last last what am i rattling on about you'll see me bring it in and send it out for the last time Well, that's out there. Don't know how far, probably further than 60 yards. Not as far as 90. Let's not brag about how far it is. I'm casting into quite a strong wind. Um, but yeah, every cast I've done off the ground has gone a lot further, so that's the main thing. I've noticed that in Brixham, can you see behind me, you probably won't be able to, but all along the top, it's all houses, all the houses are painted in pastel colours or a bright primary colour. Well, a bright colour. We've got yellows, pinks, limes, peaches, bright green, reds. That's about it really, but there's quite a lot of them. You know, from what I can see now, there's got to be at least 30. 
it's quite nice quite nice really but yeah so the viper rod has gone away I've reeled the flapper rod in I think I might actually use that flapper rod again um, I'll probably do one more cast um, that's the uh, of course that's gone right over there let's reel that in it's quite weird this place it blows your line in Nah, mate. You are. Yeah. You have a YouTube channel. Yeah. Am I what? What you gonna put it on? YouTube. Can be in it. What? Can be in it. It can be. Yeah. What's your name? Uh, Introduce yourself. It's Hi. your big moment. Hello. Hello, oh. world. So your name's Hello, is it? Yeah. So what is your name? Theo. Theo. And what's yours? Billy. So what are you mackerel fishing? Yeah, we 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 won't catch anything for days. So first of all, we started at um, over there at uh, Cambridge University. Right. Um, and then we we went down more, and then we did the anything, so we got coming out. Right. So what? You going down the end of the pier now? Are you? Uh, we don't really know where. We just don't have anything. Have you got anything yet? No. Started. No, I've been there a while. Pants. What it is? Pants. So what? You going down there now to fish? Yeah. You just got feathers, have you? Well, they're catching mackerel down there because there's a chap down there, I've been told he had five on, so if you're quick, don't get snagged up, you might get it. Right, what's your fishing Mine, Burn Sea Fishing. I moan a lot and swear a bit. So you have to, it's not made for kids. Can you have it? What is it called? Can I what? What's it called? That's the other get me to do educational stuff now. Where's your uh Tighten up? Wait, get it on the letters. What's it? No, now I want it on the uh, alphabet, has it? Right, I can see it, that's small isn't it. Well do you do it like daily? What's your YouTube channel? No, I do it once a week, every Wednesday at seven o'clock. What's it called? You got a signal. Oh yeah, what's your thingy called? Good luck, lads. And get doing YouTube because it don't take long to grow. And you might earn a few quid. Yeah, of course you do, yeah. Well, a little bit. Yeah, that's it, boy. You're done right. You know it makes sense. <laughs> Couple of nice lads. Not yet, mate. Well, the wife's gone to get another parking ticket because it works out cheaper to do that. Like I say, it's about five pound, five pound eighty. Don't quote me on it. Five eighty for four hours. Twenty-eight pound all day. Just water down there. Look at this. So yeah, she'll be back in a minute. She'll get a ticket and uh, she'll get a couple of hours, but I ain't gonna be here for a couple of hours. But I've decided I'm gonna bake this rig up and try a bit of squid. We've been using that bloody ragworm. I'm gonna buy some more ragworm, but it ain't that good. But we'll just see what happens. If I catch on a bit of squid, and I should've been using squid the whole time, I'm gonna go mental. Well, I won't go mental. I shall certainly give myself a stern talk to. Fishing mark, what do I think of Brixham? Yeah, it's nice. It's nice if the sun was out. With the sun in, it's nice. It's been enjoyable, it's been an enjoyable place. You only got from down there where you car, park your van, or your car's just down there over my shoulder. 
walk up there, you can fish anywhere along here. I fished here because of my hip. It's a little tiny step to get up and it's about the best place for me. Probably not the right place. But yeah, so we're just fishing the one rod now, the Ziplex TF5050. And it cost me 150 quid. Now, it ain't perfect. The eyes aren't straight on it. Whoever built this rod didn't really know how to put eyes on straight. Um, but the rod is fantastic. I ain't got a problem with it. And even though the eyes are like that, whereas they aren't perfect, it's still usable. And that's what I'm doing. I'm going to use that until I eventually rebuild it. I don't want to do that yet. I've got other rods to do first. And whilst I can use it, and it was being used before and anyhow, so I'll just keep using it. I don't think that for 150 quid is bad. You can buy Ziplexes new now. Whether they'll make the TF5050, I don't know. But they've got the they've got the skills and the knowledge now to make all of them. Which can only be good for the uh, British English rod market. So what's that now for British, let's say British built rods, because we've got to include Scotland, don't we? We've got um, Daiwa. Their rods are built in Britain. Components come from elsewhere, like all other rods. Um, you've got Sentry. You've got Harrison. Um, I'm sure there's others in the freshwater market, but I'm only thinking about sea rods that I know of. And obviously, Ziplex have been raised from the grave, so it's only good. It's all good. It'll create work for people, will not they, who can do it, who've got the patience to do it. It's all good. It's quite nice here now. It got a bit ropey here earlier. I was thinking oh, I'm packing up and going. Don't help that you're blanking, does it? But it is what it is. You can't do nothing about it. Never more happy when I'm on my own, really. Unless I'm in the company of the wife. Um, I'll fish with other people. I'll fish with Keith Cod and Alfie. There's other people that turn up and I fish alongside them. Not a problem, I enjoy that. But in my opinion, probably never more happier than when you're on your own fishing. You're never on your own air though. There's a stream of people walking past all the time. But it's good, they're about their business. They walk to the end and walk back. If they had a bad hit, they wouldn't. They'd get so far and say, sod it, let's go. We went for a walk along air the other day, yesterday. We got down to the steps, two thirds of the way down, turn around and come back. You can actually step onto this wall that I'm sat on fishing. And then we, I walked back along the top and then got down here, I think, or went further and got down. I had to use the wife though, I had to use her as a leaning post. Oh, she ain't coming yet. But, let's get you on these rods. But yeah, now it's been a nice day. First time fishing in Devon as well, so that's an achievement. I can only thank Jimmy for that. So uh, I guess you're on your second or third whiskey by now, Jimmy. So again, thank you very much for this week. It's much appreciated. But you know me, I still moan. I've already moaned about car parking place spaces. Um, 20 mile now zones in stupid areas. Nobody does 20 either. It's me pottering along at 25, feeling guilty so I can stay in third gear, and everyone else is zooming past.
Well, it's lovely. You can't knock it. I don't know if I've mentioned it, but it's quite nice here. It's just a pity it, that water in brown and full of fish. I went to B Sands yesterday as well. We went to a few places. Come here. Went to Slapton Sands. Down to B Sands. A um, lot of bendy roads to get to there. And then it was a lot of cars parked there, so it was hard work getting parked, but we managed. But I was talking to a fisherman at B Sands yesterday, and he'd been fishing for five hours and he hadn't had a bite. So the chap at paint and tackle shop said go to B Sands. So there's obviously a reason for it, but I would say that was probably a good place at night time. I've been told that there's many places to fish in Devon. You just need to look, walk along the um, coastal walking path and just take your pick. And if it's night time, you'll catch. So how true that is, at the minute it seems as though it's quite true. All right, Dom. Someone just come past smelling the candy floss, but I couldn't see a pipe. Two hours. Yeah. What time? Past five. I'm gonna. This one's out. I'm gonna bait up that flat rig with a bit of squid on it, and then that's it. Done. Are you sitting up there, or are you gonna sit down there? Got a coat on there, don't you? So yeah, I'm not going to fish beach sands after talking to that fisherman. Um, it's easier to get to Slapton Sands, so I'm going to do that one. And probably Budley. I want to fish at least three times there, and then that gives us a few days off because I don't want to get nagged. So I'll see you in a bit. I felt it on my face. I'm gonna go on about that. There's no need to creep up on someone, is Right, old squid head come off. I put a squid head on the top hook, and what does it do? Fly off. 
Uh, you should bite elastic get on, shouldn't you? Yeah, should do, but I don't do it. So that's the last cast. We've got a two up flapper out, squid on both. We've tried the killer bait of Devon, which is uh, crab. That ain't done no good. We've tried a bit of squid with crab, that ain't done no good. But we've tried ragworm, that ain't done no good either. And uh, it's been great fishing here today, and I haven't been bothered too much. But the dickhead that's just walked past, let's call him, to be polite, Dopey. Yes, Dopey has returned. Thank you, Don. The wife's giving me a calming sweet, haven't you, Don? What, what sort of calming sweet is this? Gobstopper. Gobstopper. So, yeah, Dopey walked past. Look at this. Now, I have taken... It's not my space. I understand it's not my space. But I am here today. Couldn't just walk around me, could he? No. Then tells me to watch it because I nearly hit him with my rod. What a dick. Oh, sorry. But there you go. <sighs> the trouble is with fishing on bricks and breakwater is you have to turn around all the time to see who's around because there could be some young children and stuff and I might say the wrong thing. So, uh, yeah, it's been nice. I nearly got blown off the bloody thing then. It is windy. I hope you can hear me. But, uh, yeah, so what can I say? Yeah, Dopey, he come past me. He could have sort of like said 10 yards down saying, excuse me, I'm coming through, coming through. And I'd have said, well, what did you have last night, curry? But no, it's not my break water, is it? It's just that I've flattened all my gear here. Most people jump down there where the little step is. Anyhow, I'm good with that now because I've got the calm and sweet. So I've got to put it in my mouth. Because why would I? Why would I listen to that? Why would I listen to put it in your mouth? Because no one else listens to that, do you, pet? Oh, we've got another one coming. But sh benefit of the doubt. See now, you see the thing is, will you be quiet? The See, she's down. Yeah, see, you can't paint everyone with the same brush pet. Why are these all the stickers oh, stuck? Sake, shut up. I'm going to lose the tooth in a minute. I might kick you in that. If it weren't for driving it, I wouldn't be. Yeah, yeah, I thought it'd be summer. All day? Well, I bet I could You can pay anybody to do anything. Anyhow, that's last cast. We're trying squid now. We're at the Mecca, which is bricks and breakwater. And uh, I can only catch fish in muddy water. That's the problem. But I've enjoyed trying. Do you know what, pet? These calm and sweets have worked with wonder. I've put this in my mouth and I am calm. Are you finished? I'm calm now, Don. Why don't you use these sweets more often for yourself? I'm not a stressed out person. I'm going to get stressed by this. I'm not the one that's got the problems, pet. You are. <laughs> Oh, look, we've got a seal. Now, I'm not going to say Tom zoom in on the seal because he'll not do it, will he, Pat? No. But yeah, we've got a seal looking at us. He's thinking, what are you doing down there? There's no bloody fish here. I've just ate them all. That's a female, I think, Don. It's only got a little head. Men have got big heads, you know. Yeah, they ain't got much in them. They ain't got much in them, apparently. Anyhow, that's it. Last cast, last rod. For those that are wait, thinking, bloody hell, how much longer has got to go? Well, we're nearly there. This ain't your normal cut of a video of fish this, fish that, and here's another fish and whatever. No, you just get to hear me rattle on. But you do get to see around, don't you? Because I actually show a bit, don't I? You know. Oh, was that a bite, Don? Don't tell me I'm going to catch on a bit of squid. No, line, line's loose, line's loose. Quite weird there, it brings your line in and that, but you don't move much, if that makes sense.
see you in a bit. I'll keep watching this. I might have a fish on that, you know, you never know. Just had three or four fishermen walk down the pier. I think they, they might have actually had a big rod, you know, like a bait fishing rod. But I guess they were mackerel fishermen, but they were all carrying buckets and rods and stuff. Apart from one was carrying a packet of wipes. Now, I don't know why you would use wipes to go fishing, because, you know, being of the uh, male species, let's just say, you know, stinky fingers is what you want in life, isn't it? I mean, why would you not want stinky fingers? So what's the point of having wipes? I mean, you, you just get a bucket of water, don't you? And a towel, really. So, what do you reckon? Maybe he's uh, keep his hands nice. Keep his hands nice. Yeah, when he's eating well, he can use palm olive soup for that. Can't you? Right. So there you go. Personally, I wouldn't use wipes. Oh, Nelly tripped over then. Personally, I wouldn't use wipes. Isn't funny, is it? It's not funny, it's a lump of metal. <laughs> you would be driving, you know. Would. You would. Drive. Yeah, you would. You'd have to get used to it. So, yeah, why? You know, either in embrace having stinky fingers or get a bucket of water and a towel. Because where do those wipes go? Where do the wipes go? They either go in the bucket, I suppose, or they're chucked in the water. I don't know. I wouldn't know. It's only my opinion. Isn't that right, Brett? Only my opinion. So where we are, we'll do a sit rep at the time. Time is nine minutes past four. Wife is sat there. Soaking the sun's rays up. The uh, Ziplex 5050 is out there somewhere with two bits of squid on a flapper rig. I, at this moment in time, haven't caught a bloody thing. And I don't care. It's been a nice day here. Never fished here before. Um, and it's, it's been enjoyable. It'd have been even better if the sun was out and baking down on us. But it isn't, but it isn't cold either. We've both noticed that it's a lot warmer down here, even though the wife is trussed up in a coat with boots on. It is warmer. Um, it's been a nice day, but still got time to catch yet. Might pull in a fish on the last reeling. These reels, these pen fisher, spin fish, pen spin, bin, pen spin fisher live liners. Um, that's the 6,500. It's 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 brilliant. I like it that much. I might buy another. And then I'll be able to either fish them or my long cast uh, For the river, that would probably be better because once you set the live line, um, you can pull line off that easy as anything, and the fish will just run with it. It's not a very loud clicker though, but it's loud enough. So I may get another one and. Uh, use it at the river on the rods but then I bought it for the bloody sniper rod didn't I oh I don't know what to do but we'll give you a quick show again and I'll see you in a bit just had to take the battery out and put it in just the normal sort of thing that you do with a GoPro Fantastic reel, an absolutely fantastic rod at a bargain price. So I've really enjoyed today's fishing with my gear. Tide's going out, rocks are showing down here to about five or six foot, so I'm reeling in. This is the last reeling. We've got a flapper on air with squid. Let's see what's on it. Don't think there is anything on it.
at least we still had bait on it that's the main thing that is the main thing isn't it so So this has been fishing at Bricks and Breakwater. Um, it's been an enjoyable day. It's not been cold. Suns was out for a little while and then it clouded over, but that's what the forecast was. So it's been a good day. I've tried my best. I'm pleased I fished bait on air. I got snagged up once because I was using a multiplier. I got that out. So we didn't lose any gear, but I didn't get any fish either. But any fish that I'd have caught today would have been returned. But it's been a nice day. We've been out, we've been somewhere different. It's lovely fresh air. Wife's been with us, sat in a chair. I had a good mooch around the shops, but she didn't like it much. So it's all been good, really. So yeah, there's not a lot else to say, is there? First time fishing in Devon and I've enjoyed it. And uh, I've loved using the Ziplex rod. The reel is fantastic. And we got the Viper out for a long first time for ages. So, what are we going to say, Pet? It's good night from me. Good night. You might have to project that a bit more. It's a windy dump. It's good night from him. There you go. See, it's good night from me and it's good night from him. So, yeah. Absolutely beautiful skies. And that over there is an outdoor swimming pool. <laughs> Doesn't look to be too many people in it though. But thanks for watching if you got this far. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, I'll see you in on. <laughs>